hey. So, governments around the world are inflating their currencies a little faster than, frankly, they're reporting, especially, at least here in the U.S. government. And, you know, it's going to have an impact on the prices of things. Prices will go up faster than they had previously. Um, so, the governments have large amounts of debt, and so that's the reason why they're inflating the currencies. Because if you make more money, that makes the debts um, become smaller in comparison. And also, the other effect of this is that any cash you have on hand is also smaller in comparison and doesn't buy as much. It's lost its buying power. And I've got some examples of this a little bit later, but for now, um, I decided to do some research and look into uh, what price to buy gold at in order to um, protect against inflation. Like if you want to make savings and you want to protect your money against inflation, gold is an option for that. And also, um, the way I decided to uh, evaluate gold was by the cost to mine it. Because ultimately the cost to mine gold is the price that will it will float back to. So if the price is too high, it'll come down to the price to mine. And if the price is too low, eventually it'll come back to that price. Um, there can be, uh, for example, uh, inflate or if interest rates are high, the price of gold may go lower than the price to mine just because uh, the money is better suited to be put somewhere else because you can get a yield, make some income in other places. So that's basically the introduction and we'll get on to the guidance steps here in a sec. Interest rates change the price of gold a lot. So I believe that deserves a whole nother video with some stats and some graphs and stuff. So we'll do that. We'll put the card up above once that's done. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the cost to mine gold. It's the end of 2020. Um, we're in like November. The price is at like almost $2,000 an ounce. And the cost to mine gold, because fuel prices frankly are low, is like $1,200 an ounce, plus or minus a couple hundred dollars. Like there's some that's more expensive, some that's less in the supply chain that the miners can get. And so they're getting it because it's inside the price range that makes sense right now. Um, so let's look at inflation and the government. So the U.S. government reports like two to th three to four percent inflation every year, which is um, well. Needless to say, they have sort of manipulated the way that it's presented. If they used an older way, an older method of measuring inflation, it would be anywhere from six to nine percent. That's why I've brought um, Shadow Stats little chart here. They show that uh, right now, year over year, we're about 9%. So here's a 10% line. And so we're really close to that. The US government obviously down here at like 2% or something ridiculous. So they've basically discounted it. And so that's yet another video we're going to have to do is we're going to have to talk about um, CAP inflation manipulation by the Fed and how they've decided to report it and um, you know soften up the numbers a little bit so that it uh, does what politicians want it to do. I don't know. I don't know what all the reasons are. I just know that it after looking at the things that they discount I found it to be pretty bad logic and so you know just from my point of view I don't think that it's uh, reported very fairly, especially like for senior citizens and our veterans that depend on CIP numbers for their income. It's kind of a big deal. So the next thing I wanted to get into is uh, buying power. So like let's say you have a hundred thousand dollars. With that right now you could probably buy about three cars. Um, and in 15 years at 3% inflation you're likely to have the ability to buy a car and a half. Well, 15 years is a pretty good amount of time, but if you have like six, well, if you have 9% inflation, 
it brings it down so instead of being able to buy a car and a half in 15 years it makes it you can buy a car and a half in seven years which is like way sooner so your money the power of your money to buy stuff is like melting away faster the higher the inflation rate actually is and I mean I'm feeling that prices change in this country I don't know if you are but I definitely am so that's uh, the important thing and so the next thing to do is like well if you've got extra cash you've got to put it somewhere you got to put it into some kind of an asset that's either gonna provide cash flow for you or at least appreciate in value with um, over time so that you maintain your buying power gold is one of those assets so we'll be looking at that okay so when talking about gold price we should probably talk about well there's two things supply and demand and so let's talk about supply so the gold price is really based on what people like what people see is going to happen in the future they price it to today so like they'll make the future occur today in the price so for example if in the mining industry um, somebody goes and finds like a huge deposit of gold somewhere and they report it on their company filings or whatever that they do then like almost immediately if it's big enough amount like the price will just drop even though like nobody's like you know even purchased or dug it out of the ground yet if they really believe it's there then the price will just so I was looking at like it was like a 20 year or 10 year chart and it was just new discoveries of gold and it was like 160 million ounces in one year for example and that was like one of the higher peaks and so you had two periods you had like a 10 year period where it was like high peaks like that and then a 10 year period where it was like low peaks like that this 10 year period is closest to where we are right now so they're like finding you know 40 you know million ounces a year and I guess they're not investing a lot in looking for it so maybe there's more that they can find but just on recent numbers they just really haven't been focusing on finding it or they haven't been able to one or the other so the supply side is kind of like bottlenecked so that's actually kind of bullish for the price of gold so even though I said that the cost to mine gold is like 1200 an ounce and the price will come down to that because they're not finding very much it may be that like the kind of the natural equilibrium price is like floating up a little higher than the cost to mine okay that having been said um, you may decide you want to own physical gold and you want to buy bullion and there's a cost to that and it's like for a one ounce gold coin you're gonna pay fifty to seventy dollars above the price of gold just to own physical and so the broker uh, sells it to you higher and they'll buy it back from you like at the spot price or even sometimes lower than the spot price so they've got a little bit of margin in there um, I'm gonna do a video about how to broker coins so if you guys want to become the broker and put up ads on Google business or whatever and like take the clients I mean I'm cool with that I don't you know I don't mind sharing how to basically do that it is pretty tight margins you have to do large volumes you've got to have cash we can talk about that later anyway I'll put a card uh, for that video as well as it comes out so um, but so if you're an investor and you're saying hey so I'm gonna buy this coin uh, bar of gold with my extra savings and how long do I have to hold it before the inflation basically gets me back to the money that I had before well at 9% inflation you're looking at about a year and you're back in the money essentially like if you get it at a fair price now if you get it at a high price and it comes back down you might be five years out before you're back to par so you gotta kinda be careful with that now you can go in the stock market and you can buy gold stocks, although that can be a little tricky, or even just a gold like um, 
uh, ETF fund that's just got a bunch of gold things in it and so you kind of get an average of everything or you can even buy gold futures on the market but they expire and you can own physical gold uh, by buying and selling those essentially so there's different ways to do it and some have different benefits and costs one thing is like if we totally blew up with hyperinflation our currency um, then you know the government in the past has confiscated gold I'm not saying it will happen again necessarily but it might be nice to have some on hand buried or hidden in the corner of a house somewhere you know it can be handy just to have some on hand in case you need to save it for any day when your currency explodes so I'm not saying it's gonna happen but you know it's getting more interesting these years so I want to talk a little bit about some of these charts I made so here I've got cost to mine at 9% inflation we did a little bit of uh, you know math up here to figure out what it would look like compounding okay so this is 10 years right here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 and this is like the cost to mine now and then this is like 2021 2022 2023 2024 this is close to the price where it is right now right here 2025 so probably like you know five years out it may be less because there is less gold but um, so this kind of gives you an idea of you know what to expect maybe in the next 10 years I actually expect it to be higher than this um, possibly then again maybe not but I mean it will fluctuate up and down within a range of these prices but I mean you know just kind of as a an inflation projection this is kind of what it looks like it could be right and so right now we're at about this price this is cost to mine with 20 percent inflation so this one goes up a lot faster you'll notice in 10 years seven thousand dollars versus you know almost three thousand dollars that's kind of a big difference and then I was like well okay it's more complicated than that because you've got um, the cost of energy right now at thirty nine dollars a barrel for oil the cost of energy is really cheap okay and so oil is too low or gold is too high or maybe it's like kind of a combination of both things together so probably I expect the price of oil to come up and the price of gold to go down some frankly um, although with the government looking to print more money to you know kind of stimulate the economy or whatever they're going to try to do probably gold is going to kind of stay where it is or go up <laughs> so if you got 9% inflation and high cost of energy then now your gold's worth you know twice as much as it would have been in the other 9% scenario or at least in the, another thousand dollars on top and then same thing goes with 20% inflation now I asked myself I was like well you know what is hyperinflation so I quickly looked up the definition hyperinflation is 50% per month so it's like 600% year it's like multiplying times six and basically if you do that for 10 years the dollar goes to zero this is 72 billion dollars an ounce if we ever get to that that means that we have to be on a new currency or I don't know they just they won't be printing billion dollar bills <laughs> let's just start over so you know at some point we get to your you know if we get to year four of hyperinflation which is absurd I don't think I don't think most countries get that far they might get through year two or three and then you know you could look at Germany and see what they did but I just you know you start getting uh, exponential jumps it's like orders of magnitude thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions <laughs> tens of millions you know fifties of millions hundreds of millions I mean, it's crazy so we did that just for fun just to kind of see um, so you know prices that I think are are fair are kind of in this range right here so this is probably still a little bit even high for me like just my personal comfort zone because it's kind of like the previous high from the last bull run the, I think anything under that is like probably a good deal right now at this point you should know that in order to protect your money your buying power you need to own something that's inflation resistant 
cash is not that thing. <laughs> and so pick up some gold or crypto or, uh, well, some of the more popular crypto. Some of the other stuff is like not very good. But anyway, or a house or something. And what's good about gold is it's easy to sell again. Like, uh, like diamonds are harder to sell than gold. And I know because I buy diamonds and gold. Gold is like easier to sell by far. So um, if you can pick it up for fifteen hundred dollars an ounce, I assume that's kind of a kind of an equilibrium price right now for me. Um, you'll have to do your own due diligence because you're you and I'm me, and you know who knows what's between a lot of internet at least distance. Um, so you might want to look to avoid broker fees. Uh, one thing you can do is become the broker yourself by purchasing coins and scrap jewelry for people that want to sell. Sometimes they want to sell at higher prices than you want to buy, but you know you got to figure out what works for you. You can pass it on until you do get the prices you want, or or whatever. So there's ways to do it. I made a video about how to buy scrap gold. I'll link it here. Go ahead and click on that, and it'll help me uh, set up my secret lab. And I appreciate it so much. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And have a nice day. See you next one.